what's good everybody so today I decided to make a little video um, I kind of want to show you how I um, kind of work in Lightroom I'm not going to show you how I edit necessarily or how to edit in Lightroom I'm just going to kind of show you how to import your photos um, how I kind of go through selecting which photos I want to keep and which photos I want to delete um, just kind of how I the logistics I guess working in Lightroom um, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is um, click shift command and I and that's gonna open your import window um, and I just got some a few photos on my cards here that I took during South by Southwest which was garbage this year by the way um, so if you didn't make it out this year you did not miss much um, these are just a few photos that I caught one night we were having dinner with uh, with some friends and, and I saw some people on the street that I decided to uh, shoot so over here on this uh, left side you'll see the source and you can basically select from where you're you're wanting to import your photos from usually what I would do is take the photos off the card and put them on my, my hard drive or something but I'm too lazy to do that right now so they're on my card the EOS digital that's my SD card um, and basically you would navigate to the folder where your photos would be and um, you know they would appear here um, and so I have my photos loaded up right here now basically any photo that's checked is a photo that's gonna get imported so for instance if you didn't want certain photos to be imported you can select individually which photos you do want to be imported um, but I want all my photos to be imported there's only like seven of them so that's fine and then once you select and you found the photos that you want to import you're gonna go down here and click on import you're gonna let that work a little bit uh, depending on your system what kind of computer you're running um, you know it may import them quickly or it may import them slowly um, so usually what I do at this point is I click on the first one um, and I'll go right down here and I'll click on this uh, you know small box within a larger box um, and you can either click on that or you can press E and what that's gonna do is make the photo large and so what I'll kind of do is I'll scroll through them initially just to see what I have and kind of get a feel for um, you know what I like and what I don't like um, so this is a photo of my buddy Joey and Stephanie um, it's just something I snapped as I was walking around the corner just to make sure that my settings were correct so I'm not gonna necessarily keep this so what I'll usually do um, when I come across a photo that I don't want to keep is I'll press the X button by itself and that will set it as rejected um, so that I know it's not a photo I necessarily want to keep um, so then what I'll do is I'll go to the next photo and I'll look at that and I'll see okay you know that's okay but not necessarily I don't think it's a keeper so I'm gonna press the X um, you know I like that but I think I have another photo kinda similar to this one it's that one um, I really like this photo it's a cool photo it's like a family kind of obscure you know they're wearing kinda crazy stuff so I like that um, on a photo like this I tend to keep the photo that's further or has a wider field of view basically so I'm gonna go ahead and set this one as rejected and keep this one um, you know, that's a cool photo Some homeless dude without a shirt riding his bike through the middle of the street so that's pretty cool I'm gonna keep that this is a pretty cool photo this chick it's actually a tattoo shop and she was just chilling outside so I snapped a photo of her real quick I actually like that I'm gonna keep that um, and that's a cool car and I got some motion in there so that'll be cool too I'll go ahead and keep that as well um, so that's all the photos that I basically have in this set and so usually what I'll do is I'll go back down here on this grid um, and go back to grid view by pressing G and so here you can see the photos that you set as rejected they'll have a little flag up on the top left corner with an X um, and that basically means that you've set the photo as rejected and it's grayed out and you can see the photos that are not grayed out um, you know these are the ones you're gonna keep so usually at this point what I do is I press command delete and it'll basically single out these uh, photos that you have selected to be rejected and so this little window is going to pop up that's going to say delete the three rejected master photos from disk or just remove them from Lightroom so basically at this point you have the option to just delete them out of your Lightroom uh, grid or you can delete them from your disk from your hard drive so you're actually going to be deleting the original photos um, and depending on the situation in this situation you know you'll find a lot of people that say you know keep every single photo you take um, you know never completely delete a photo off your hard drive um, I kind of tend to disagree with that 
Um, you know, if it's a photo that I look at and I'm really just not inspired by it or impressed by it or anything like that, or I know it was just like a test shot or something, I'm not really interested in like revisiting it in the future or anything like that. Um, you know, if you're one of those people who decide, you know, you need to keep every photo because a month or a year from now, you may look at it and be completely like overwhelmed with excitement by it, you know, then go ahead and keep it. But I'm just going to delete them from, oh, in that situation, you just click remove and it take them out of Lightroom. But I'm going to go ahead and delete them from disk. Um, and because that's going to help me save some hard drive space, you know, I feel like the people who usually say that have like 10 terabytes of hard drive space. I don't really have that much. I can't afford to be buying new hard drives every month so I'm just gonna delete that out of there and I'm left with these four photos here um, so usually what I'll do is I will get back into uh, lope I guess it's lope view um, or I don't know how you say that honestly but I'm gonna press E so I can look at them enlarged and I'll just go through them again and make sure I actually do want to keep them and if I don't then of course I would press the X button again um, but I'm not gonna do that so if you press the X button on a photo and you decide that you do want to keep it, what you're going to go ahead and do is press U and that's going to remove the flag. Um, so you can see down here when I press X it'll set it as rejected and you can see on the bottom left it grays it out and it puts that little flag. Um, if I want to undo that flag I press the U and it'll remove that flag so that I can go ahead and keep the photo. Um, and then usually at this point what I'll do is I'll click on the first photo and um, you know I kind of just uh, make sure they look good as thumbnails you know make sure I really do want to keep the photos I really do want to proceed with editing them and then once I've done that I'll go into develop and now this is where you would actually um, so now we're in develop this is where you're actually gonna edit your photos and you know color correct and color grade them basically um, so usually when I'm in this point what I really like to do is press the L button and what's that what that is gonna do um, is kind of dark in the surroundings so that your photo just really pops off the screen and your photo is really the only thing that's bright. And this has a few settings. Um, if you press it once you get this where it's kind of like your photos lit up and everything around it is kind of grayed out a little bit, blacked out a little bit. Um, it kind of darkens it. If you press L again it just completely blackens everything out so your photo is completely singled out and all you can see is your photo. Um, I don't really like to edit in this view because I kind of like to see my settings over here and you know what I'm doing over here. Um, as far as selecting like presets, if I decide to choose presets, or you know if I want to um, correct something over here. Um, so I kind of just like to use it on that first setting where the photo is kind of you know still bright and you can still kind of see the background and everything. Um, and yeah, that's basically as far as I'm going to get today. Like I said, I'm going to make another video. Um, you know, the VSCO series that I did was pretty popular. And I actually have these really cool um, VSCO settings that you can use in Lightroom um, installed on my computer. And this is Lightroom 5, I think. Yeah, so some of you guys may have Lightroom CS6 or CC or whatever it is now. Um, but I think you can pretty much get them on anything. So yeah, they're, they're cool settings to use as, as like a starting point. I mean, then you can kind of edit them yourself to get the look you're really going for. Um, but yeah, that's basically um, how I kind of work. Um, I think I'm going to do like an exporting one. Maybe I'll do that when I edit, when I show you how to edit or how I edit. Um, but yeah, that's basically as far as I'm going to get today. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video and you learned something. Let me know in the comments if there's anything specific, any specific topics you want me to talk about, um, any other tutorials. Um, I have some other cool stuff. I just got a new camera, a couple of new cameras actually, because I really want to up my uh, f uh, video game on YouTube. I want to start making more films. So I got some equipment so that will enable me to do that. So I appreciate y'all watching. Keep watching those VSCOs. I think the first one is like at 100,000 views right now, which is incredible. I've never had a video with that many views before, so that's awesome. Um, and the other one, the part two, is getting some traction as well. Um, so I really appreciate that. I really want to, you know, keep putting out videos and, and showing you guys how to do certain things. So let me know in the comments if you enjoy the videos, what else you'd like to see. Um, and yes, yeah, subscribe and share and all that good stuff. So I will catch y'all next time. Hopefully it won't be too long from now. Um, and yeah, be excited for new stuff. Catch y'all on the flip.